Welcome back here to the Global State University Athletic Department. We are back here in the Waco Center this morning, down in the floor level of the center here in the Pioneer Media Room for another segment of the Coaches Show. And our guest in today's show is head football coach Mike Keller. Coach, yeah. hey, another win, another yeah. win. Three weeks in a row. We need to yeah. keep doing this every week. Yeah, I wish we could keep playing. You yeah. Know, it seemed like we uh, got hot uh, towards the end of the year there and, and won those last three and uh, pretty pr proud of the way the guys finished the season. I tell you, the guys made plays. Of course, now we talked last week, you know, the Wesleyan had some players mm -hmm. and uh, really had uh, the Concord team on the ropes and went yeah. nine and two and had West Liberty down at the end. And so uh, and it ended up being a battle, as you yeah. expected. Yeah. Well, they're, they're much improved from what they were a year ago. Um, uh, they, they're, they're, they're pretty big up front. I mean, on both sides of the ball, offense, defensive line, they got a, uh, a very big running back, runs hard. Uh, they had one of the top receivers in the league. Uh, so we knew, you know, it was going to be a little bit of a battle. Um, and then the rain, you know, the, the the rain. If when you're the favorite, when you when you feel you got the better team, what you, the last thing you want is adverse conditions. You, you know, and, yeah. and we tell our guys, no matter what the weather is, it's ideal. But yep. but uh, you know, we, we we went into that and we knew the rain because our passing game's kind of been hot towards the end of the year, and and I was concerned about being able to throw the ball in the weather, and uh, because it, it, against West Liberty we struggled throwing a little bit of times in the weather. I guess Concord and the pouring rain, you know, we struggled. Both teams really struggled to throw the ball that day in the weather. And then going into Wesley. But we came out and, and we're pretty sharp early. You yeah. Know, uh, got, we, we, I think we won, out of, of the 11 games, I think we won the coin toss in 10 of them, which is something unheard yeah. of. And, uh, but we lost the coin toss. They deferred, kicked the toss. And uh, we got the ball and went right down the field and scored. And uh, I was trying to recall with the staff yesterday, I think that was of our 11 games, we scored on an opening drive nine of them. And uh, yep. the one game, Concord, we scored on the second drive, and uh, we weren't as fortunate in, in the Notre Dame game. But anyway, long story short, um, we took the ball, went right down the field, scored, and uh, missed the extra point. Had a bad snap, fumble, bad hold, crazy yeah. kick, whatever it was. And it's sixth all out of above, yeah. all the above. It's sixth out than us. And uh, and then they get the ball, and we, we commented on the headsets because you watch the tape, you know, and you're like, man, that back's a good looking kid. But then when you see him live, you yeah. know, we're on the headsets. We're like, man, that back is a is a big, good looking kid. Yeah. And you know, they hand the ball to him, and and he got a little downhill on us on a couple of plays, and they uh, they ran the quarterback for a nice little run, and and uh, they go down and score, and uh, we were able to match it. And and uh, long story short, kind of took control of the game. You know, at, at right before the half. Yeah, it was a big a, drive. Yeah, it was a big drive right before the half. Hit hit uh, Bellamy on the corner route for a touchdown, and. That put us up 20 to 14, but in my mind, I went to the half not very happy because uh, I thought, well, we've executed that relatively decent, and we got and we're only up six, you know, and and we'd done some things that that happen in upsets, like miss an extra point, you know, uh, uh, give up a big play, turn the ball over in the red zone. Those are a formula for for losing a game that you feel that you should win. Yeah. Um, so at the half, you know, the staff and it was it was a very uh, lively discussion with the team at halftime and then we did a really good job in the second half our defense came out and played you know played lights yeah. out in the second half really really stopped their run game and and created a couple turnovers got a blocked punt and, yeah. and Zayhoff had you know the long 71 yard touchdown pass and uh and that really put the game away you know yeah. when, when we made that play early in the third quarter yeah the, the old Earl Weaver plus the defense in the big play early. yeah three run home right yeah yeah that's right, yeah. That's right. <laughs> But that uh, the the touchdown right before the half, you mentioned the play mm -hmm. to Bellamy. In those condition conditions for that pitch and catch from yeah. from Anthony and from from I, Bellamy, that was I heck couldn't of a play. be happy. <laughs> Anthony's a, Anthony's a, a very highly talented thrower. Uh, probably as good as arm. Well, no, there's no question. He's the best arm I've coached. You know, mm -hmm. and I had uh, Kevin McKay, but Cal, got, you know, was with the Steelers for a little bit, mm -hmm. got cut and. Pete Lollick had every opportunity to be an NFL player. Both those guys were, you know, four-star kids who were bounce-back guys. Both of them were the Elite 11, and and their arms don't compare to Anthony. So he's got as good an arm as I've seen, and and the kid is a really, you know, smart player. As a freshman, that weather didn't affect him at all. I mean, he was yeah. throwing darts, and but the plays that 
that the receivers made. I mean, the corner route that o Orion caught, you know, yeah. the first series of the game on the smash concept was huge. The the, the catch that Bellamy made in the corner of the end zone, it, it was a double hitch with the corner route. So simple. It was a pop Warner yeah. play. It ain't, it ain't a hard play. But both guys were down, and the ball's right around the 18-yard line, and he threw a missile at that corner. Yeah. And I didn't think Bellamy could drive on it. And, and, and I've seen him drive on a lot of stuff. And he drove on it and made a really good play in the corner of that end zone. So yeah. I was really pleased with the way those guys were executing. The uh, it, one you talked about the the coin toss. You know, we had uh, former player Andy Marshall. Yeah, we had the the big military presence there and the yeah. the flag before the game. Yeah, the uh, tremendous job this institutionally. You know, the president yeah. was out there with us. You know, holding the flag for the game. Uh, you talk a little bit about you know having Andy Marshall in here to speak to the team well, and him being a part of well, it. Well, Andy there. spoke to the team Friday night. Um, gave him his background and they were fascinated. You know, uh, mm -hmm. uh, I believe we played we played 12 strong. It was Thursday night. Yeah. And several of the players went to that, and uh, you know, I, I was honored that he would that he'd be willing to speak to the team on Friday, and and uh, he did a really good job with that. And and uh, you know, when when Zay caught the long touchdown, I think, I think he saluted the uh, yeah. you know the bandage there, and yeah. he knew Andy was up there. And and then I got to spend a little time with Andy after the game, and he was he was just thrilled with the school and the program and, and, you know, you and Dr. Manchin and the way we're doing things. He was on the sideline for a lot of the game. Getting into it. <laughs> yeah, he really got into it. And, and he, he shared with me that he said he was thinking about it. And it was the first college football game he'd been to that he didn't play in, you know. So yeah. he's, uh, uh, he, you know, I think he's going to be a regular moving forward at a lot of our football games. And, uh, and uh, you know, he was just, I thought it was well done by the school. And, and uh, I was very pleased with the way the team responded as well. Yeah, and uh, the cheerleaders wearing the military jerseys for the day, and uh, and the fans, you know, we were it ended up being a pretty nice little yeah. gathering considering the conditions, you know, and they were into it the whole way. Yeah, very much so. Very, and uh, you know, I could hear them out there when we're not doing well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but it was it was a uh, it was a good atmosphere for for a cold, rainy November day, and we had great weather the whole season. I mean, I mean, the the week before, you know, the two weeks before here at home, I mean, it was it was you know almost 80 degrees in it in a, in a late yeah. October game, and then you know the game at Fairmont it was a beautiful day out, and then so we we had to battle a little bit of rain and, and weather, but a lot of our linemen when we were warming up, they were like, oh, finally we get football weather, you know. Yeah. But, but quarterback receivers don't think like that. They, <laughs> yeah. They, they want it nice. <laughs> yeah. Well, now that you know that, that we put a bow on the season and uh, made the big jump to come out seven and four. Mm -hmm. What are some thoughts in terms of just putting a wrap on the accomplishments of this team, especially playing so many young young guys? Well, you feel really good about the direction of the program. I mean, we knew, you know, we talked a year when COVID happened. You know, by design, we were trying to play young guys, and uh, and we obviously we didn't see that season coming, and and the spring season really wasn't fair to our kids in a lot of ways. And uh, but we wanted to get them on the field and get to play, and, and they were nowhere near. You know, ready. If we had a veteran team, maybe the results would be a little different. So that was really a good experience for them. But it put a bad taste in their mouth with the losses. You know, and then, uh, and then the the twenty twenty one season, the three and seven. I don't want to say we we lost by design. That would be that would be a lie. But we did we did decide when we got the job here in two thousand nineteen that we needed to to go young and recruit and and do those type of things. And that that core group. Is really the group that that played this year as sophomores and was seven and four. And what we did to help them is uh, a year ago at this time we brought seven mid-year kids in, you know, transfer kids uh, from the portal and junior college, and, and and then we did about the same over the summer. So that 12, 14 guys added to that core group with a normal high school class that you recruited really was the reason we went from where we were at to being seven and four. We were going to be much better with just that core group growing, but adding that talent. Was was key. Now, fast forward a year, you know you're seven and four, kind of the same formula. Keep your team here. You know we're having player meetings now and do all we can to keep our players here, uh, keep that core group moving because now there are sophomores that are about to be juniors and uh, we've had some very good player meetings. We had uh, we had five kids who who walked as seniors uh, Saturday. Who three of them are actually graduating early and I've had exit meetings with them. And all three want to come back, and they still got two years of eligibility left. They graduated yeah. that early because of the COVID situation. Yeah. Um, so that was that's been huge. That's a great sign that they want to. And yeah, that's exactly right. And then uh, one other kid is is in the process of getting a medical red shirt, so I think he'll be back. Uh, the other, the fifth kid was a little bit of a long shot, but but we the, 
kids want to be here. And that, I think that's pretty cool. And kind of the same for me to try to try to sign some kids at mid-year, you know, and, and go out and have a really good recruiting class, the high school kids. That'll, that'll be the signing date in February. And then, and then go through spring ball. It's, you know, it's football's rinse and repeat. I mean, it's yeah. kind of the same thing. We're going to try to, uh, we're going to follow that formula and hopefully we jump from three wins to seven wins. We could jump from seven wins to, you know, we want to win them all. You know, that's our goal. Uh, that's an organizational thing. That win loss thing is all about, you know, it takes everyone pulling the rope the yep, same sure direction. Does. And, uh, and uh, I think we got the core, we got the team, you know, we just got to, and I love where the school's at and the direction it's going. And uh, we just, we, we got to continue to grow, you know, our, mm-hmm. our sophomores got to be better juniors and our juniors got to be better seniors and so on and so forth. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, it was, it was a real exciting year, exciting finish to the year. Uh, you know, looking forward to the off season here yeah. and, uh, yeah. and next season. I know your guys are real active in the crowds here at the basketball games and yeah. around all that. So I think they're ready to bask in the fun of the season and really enjoy their winter here, working yeah, out and so. going to ball games. Everything I've gotten from my exit meetings has been really positive, and uh, the the guys are the guys are ready to get back at it, which that's a good sign. You know, and usually a lot of times when these when the seasons are over, you're like, oh, the season's over. I get up and shit. This is one of those deals where everyone wishes they were still working and still yeah. playing. So, and I told them next year we got that option. You know, if we win enough games, you could play past the season. Yeah, we can so, keep going. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's, that's going to be the goal. Yeah, we'll be all for that. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, Coach, congratulations on another nice season yeah. in your career here and a great season for Glenville. And uh, thank you for joining us out there as well. We'll be talking to you next week on The Coach's Show.